Hey Mo, we need to get an intro down for this channel, you know. Yeah, but what are you thinking, Lee? Why don't I rap over the top of it? Don't be ridiculous, you sound like a northern M&M. Look, listen to me. Yo, yo, yo. The munch brunch in the hoose, man. Absolutely not. Right, what you got in mind? Let's just keep it simple. I'm Lee. I'm Amy. They wear the munch brunch. Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mukbang with Amy and Lee. We are the Munch Bunch UK. Lee, tell them what we have on the menu. Amy, for the first time in a long time, we have Donna kebabs. Uh, or Donna meat, Amy has. I have a Donna kebab, chips, a very small pizza. Um, it's not even, I don't think you can call it a pizza because how small it is. But it is a pizza. It's a mixed meat one. Um, and we've given a slice to our tea, so when we open that, there's one less slice. Lee's uh, had a kebab and pita bread, but the trouble is, I asked for this. So I've had a bit of salad and mayonnaise on mine, but I asked for the chilli sauce to come in a pot. Lee's had his on his kebab, and they've sent us the extra spicy chilli sauce. Yeah, it's it's a tad warm, um, to the point of being like, they should put a hazard warning on the kebab. It's made Lee cough quite a lot. And I only had a little bit on my finger, because I was giving to our tea a bit of the meat, and I was trying to get my finger the sauce. I oh, lick it off. No, bad idea. Right then, we're back. I just go and grab some ketchup because that might douse the flavour. Then it might douse the heat. Uh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Because at the minute, I feel like a dragon. I feel like a Welsh dragon. I feel like I've saved the day with that for you. I reckon you have, but the problem is your your main part of your meals over there. I'm hidden. I've got some kebab meat over here in a try, guys, with salad. Unfortunately, because there's two of us, if there's just one, we'd fit it all in. Yep. When there's two of us, it's really difficult to fit Show all the food the on, on the screen. That looks good. <coughs> there's what? the pizza. Like I said, I'll give a slice to our tea. Let's uh, divide it up. You know what the sad thing is? Food doesn't last long enough. No, not that. Your chips, considering how much this place has gone up in price... I could never find a chip that's fantastic. The quality of chip hasn't gone up to match the price increase, I don't think. That's good pizza. So, I was searching for this chip shop because Uber was being a, a bit of an idiot. We got They said, oh, I'll have 10 vet promos or promotion codes for 35% off. I so, happy days. We're not going to have 10 takeaways in the next two weeks, but we'll have a couple. Go to use it. Sorry, you can't use the promo code. So I tried talking to Uber. I said, Uber, I can't use your code. They said, sorry, we can only help you with existing orders. I said, but well, I'm not going to make an order <laughs> when I can't use the code. That's what I want to order because I've got a code. And then there's no bloody drivers anyway. Yeah, I tried five different takeaway shops on Uber and no drivers collect only. If I wanted to collect it, I wouldn't be trying to buddy order it, would I? To, for delivery. Why is that? Do you reckon maybe they're all out on delivery? I don't know. I keep hearing adverts on the radio for delivery drivers for Uber, so... Are you not going to put your ketchup on first? Uh, I'm going to go... I'm hardcore. I'm going to try it. <laughs> that is hard. <laughs> Could be different with bread, though. We will see. Mm. This is really nice. It tastes like it's got aniseed on that. There's definitely a hint of heat. Nice though, tasty. The kebab meat's good. Kebab meat is always hitting me, but that is lush. The worst is when you get kebab, because that's such how expensive a ke kebab can be. If you get it, it's like the meat's quite... I don't crap. know, there's something about it. It's either good or bad. If you get bad kebab meat, that's a bad kebab. You don't I want to know. Kebab. So, like, the other day we got Chinese food. And it's quite light on. And it tasted really rough. I don't know if they just used the day before. I don't think they're allowed to do that, though. <clears throat> Are you not, though? Because caps do. You know, if they've got, like, salad and stuff, you can carry it over, can't you? Um, or, like, tikka meat and not stuff. Not if they want to keep their hygiene rating high. Not refrigerated. You can keep things like that. I don't actually know. What, do you want to try and fit some new kebab meat on your plate? So it shows it up a bit. I want to know what you think of that pizza. Well, I know it's going to be nice because we've had one before. Um, what a hint of licorice, and I don't know why. Well, all that's on here is a tomato based sauce. Um, then we've got tikka, original chicken, and another kind of chicken. I can't remember which one it is. Um, so, yeah, three types of chicken and 
just the base. That's going to have to do, guys, I'm afraid, because I won't eat some of these chips. Like... There you go. I've sort of divided up. No, the... I'd rather you have it. So, uh, tomorrow, big day in the uh, the Munch Bunch house. Well, not really. Ames already had a booster jab. It's mine and Tia's turn. I remember my mum really poorly that day. I was bad as well, so they don't fill me with confidence. These guys had the AstraZeneca. It's the Pfizer one they've got to have tomorrow. I don't even know the difference. <clears throat> Different heard, injections. Yeah, but I've heard these names for ages now. Like I meant to understand what the big fuss is all about and why it's important to get one and not the other or vice versa. I don't bloody know. What do you think? It's all right. The pizza's good. What do you think? I can taste something like... I know, so you keep telling us. Can you taste it? No. Like licorice taste? No. I think she, she tastes what's been a pain in the arse. Yeah. It might be the garlic mayo you've had. Yeah. <clears throat> what else has been going on? Uh, we haven't recorded in like two weeks because we're not busy watching darts. Oh, <coughs> God. Okay, so he's got me in to darts. And I mean, <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. I'm already looking at booking a holiday next year to go and watch the darts. Are you? Well, they're at Butlins right now. It started today in Minehead, uh, which is in the UK. And I was mm. like, oh, okay, that'd be good. I think, like, literally you book a weekend at Butlins and you get to go to the darts the whole time. Well, maybe you have to pay separately for the darts, I'm not sure. This well, salad is great. Oh, good. I'd go and watch it now. I'm just a bit scared of the noise, so a bit loud. Well, it was in the pub, weren't we? Our, like, one of our pubs in uh, our town centre. Because it was in our city last week, the darts was, one of the tournaments. Yeah. And there was a lot of people in there. And there was one bloke, we don't know his name. He was, he was not a town, I'd like, say Mr. Much. Irritating, that's what he was. And uh, he started Went on laughing. Went the entire pub, and I'm, this is an enjoy. Ha, 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 ha. The loudest they could go. Mm. To the point where everybody was like... He'd be the centre of attention. So loud. But then... Um, <laughs> we've seen him on the telly later on at the darts. So, oh, I thought it was a famous person. If the famous person was really flipping annoying. It is weird because they're not famous. I mean, they were just having a drink in there. But when you see someone on the telly... And you've just been sat across from in a pub. It's like... This is going to sound really obscure. I'm not saying for God's sake we're bad. Bloody hell. But like some people's gone... Oh, it's you on YouTube. Well, you know what? Well, like the time I got chased for a photograph down the street. No, did different things and... That did happen, for anyone who's only been watching recently. A little lad oh, followed me watching... around Tesco. We well, didn't really follow me. He's seen me in Tesco. And then, um, oh. like, ten minutes later, I just saw the side kid as I was about to cross over the road. And he comes walking up to me. I thought he wanted directions or something or other. I took my headphones out. Oh, you're off YouTube, aren't you? It's like, um, oh. Yeah. He was like, can I get a photo? I, um, I felt a bit awkward, as in like, I weren't expecting it, but yeah, of course you can. I'm ready next time. I've got some signed autographs and pictures, selfies, whatever, in my pocket. Ten quid a go. There we go. No, but it is weird though, yeah. isn't it? Like, even now we'd seen them in the pub and there was just people in the pub. Mm. When you saw them on the TV, it was like, okay, that's weird. Yeah. Oh, you do, Amy, okay. I'm fine. I never ever have salad on kebabs, but I'm not kidding you. It's the best mistake they made. It's fantastic. It was a mistake because I said I, I put I added salad on the order. Then I said, I'm, do you want salad? <laughs> Just as soon as she'd want it. She said, no, I'm all right, thank you. I'll have it without the salad. Okay, no worries. The reason, you guys know I love salad, but... Chip shop salad. Yeah, it's like cabbage. This is brilliant because I've shredded it like noodles. It's great. Um, then they'd sent salad anyway. So yeah, we are. We've got a lot of things coming up over the next month. Obviously, you all have probably it's Christmas and stuff. So I don't know. It just seems to be one of them months where it's gone that fast. One minute it's Halloween, now it's like Christmas in a matter of a few it's weeks. Less time. than five weeks. Um, um, today, so we got a party next Saturday here. Party. Um, so, my dad's got an operation on the Friday for his eye. Lee's mum and Bob are coming down on Saturday. Then our friends are coming for a Christmas party. Then we're out for a meal on the Sunday. Then we've got, like, 
Christmas fairs and stuff to go to at our local pub. I've got my dad and his missus staying over. I have Wednesday over. Next Wednesday. Till for not on Thursday, till Thursday. So I'm busy, busy, busy. Let's get dizzy. Yeah, so we got that. But it is stopping us from doing what we love to do, which is eat food and do videos. Um, we'd hope to do some Christmas stuff. That ain't happened. If you remember last year, we actually did the Thanksgiving video. Mm. Wait, what are you giving thanks for? I know it's a bit late, but is there anything you're giving thanks for? Yeah. Go on. One. I was thinking about this all this morning. Really? Yeah. I really, really love Thanksgiving. I love the idea of it. I like the idea of Thanksgiving in fact more than Christmas. Sorry. Oh, hello. I'm going to be honest, because I personally am not religious, I celebrate Christmas for the wrong reasons, you know? I, I think a lot of people do. You know, I celebrate it for this, like the getting together and everything, but giving thanks used to be for the farmers and the growing crops and everything. But, like, nowadays, it's it's for that, but it's also giving thanks for, like, your family... Yeah. Health, your friends, food on the table, roof over your head. And I was thinking, to me, that means more than Christmas, in my opinion. So, I actually give thanks for, like, family, food on the table. Because there's so many people across the world. My my friend always says, half the world's on a diet, half the world's starving. And that's so true. In the respect that half the world can eat what they want to eat. And you've got the money and it's right there and more money than cents. Or half of them are on a diet and half the world is starving like third world countries haven't got the food. But that, it's just a metaphor. It's yeah, not but it actual. can't be half, can it? Because No, it's just it's just to say like, oh, it's raining cats and dogs. It's not like exact numbers and stats. It's just something I just to think say. like half the world is stuff in the face, like we are and not really good. Yeah, but then half of it, a lot of a big proportion of it like and not being able to eat, and they right. are struggling with food. It's one of them ones. So yeah, I, I think we we're, we're in a good position. Even if like you got no money or you got no, you've you got your family and friends and your roof over your head. That's something to be grateful for. Isn't it? What about you, Lee? Um, I'm giving thanks to this kebab at the minute. That's not too hot. It's very manageable and enjoyable. I did wonder how you was coping. It's good. I'm enjoying it. Why do they... I know they've got to shave the kebab off. Yes. In, like, big, long bits. But it's really difficult. Uh, I'm also thankful for my... Well, I can't say my health. My foot's no, knackered. but realistically, you should go into why today you've got to be thankful for your health. So, when you watch this, a couple of days earlier than this, um, my uncle lost his partner. Just randomly, just it was out last night for a. a Give him the backstory. Of what's up with him now? His partner wasn't very well, and then he, he was very unwell. He's like in his eighties. Uh, He's actually seventy six. Your mum told. Oh, sorry, seventy six. I, I didn't. I'm crap with ages, and he was very unwell. And then they went. He's got he's, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Yeah, but then he had like, gastroenteritis for a little while. Yeah. And that cleared up. And yesterday he was a lot better. And he was like, oh, I want to go out for a pizza. And he's like, okay, that'd be nice. Let's go out for a pizza. And Which then, is really nice because for a long time, before the gastro, he couldn't manage it because of the Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, could he? So he, he felt a bit more perky yesterday. He went out for a pizza. And as he was leaving the restaurant, it dropped dead. Just right out of nowhere. Well, he collapsed on the floor. The ambulance came for him and it, mm. Keith wasn't allowed to go to the hospital. He had to go home and he died at two o'clock this morning. He had a massive heart attack. They call it the Black Widow, you know, heart attack because it was in like a big archery. However, it's like so unexpected and there's a big age gap between them. So it is, he would be classed as your uncle because like, obviously because they was together and the yeah. day you would have an auntie and uncle if it was through marriage man and woman so it would be your class as your uncle and uh, you know they've been together over 30 odd years and you've had a lot of problems and deaths in your family in the last couple haven't you really yeah I had like 8 immediate family members um, and my uncle's partner obviously wasn't blood but like, I've known him since I was born or since I was like, old enough to know people and out of the 8 of them I've got 4 left I'm going to be an orphan before I know it you know can you still be adopted? Or like, uh, my age? Any age. Hmm. Mm. I need to find a rich dad. <laughs> dad, can you adopt me, please? I know that you don't know. Jokes. Me. She'll say, your your mom and dad are out there on a on a yacht somewhere in the Sanctuary. I usually say your mum uh, got it away, had it away of the milkman. 
because uh, this just doesn't explain uh, the situation. Now, I don't see how you don't look like your dad. I do. You don't look like your mum. Well, your dad's like... only my entire dad's eyes have all got the same eyes. We've all got these. Apart blue eyes. from the eyes, I do look a bit like my dad. I don't know. Either I'm crap at telling what who people look like. I mean, for a long time, I thought I looked like Tom Jones. <laughs> but, no, I'm joking. I'm just very bad at like noticing things like that. But oh, I have noticed. I want to so, what are you thankful for? Just your health? Oh, yeah. My, uh, my, I haven't really got much. I'm healthy. Like, I'm not ill. Ill. But I have, like, general aches and pains, which I've noticed creeping up over the last year or two. I'm like, I didn't have that when I was 21. Uh, I'm thankful for my loved ones. Mm. And... The alive. weather. Because I like bad weather. I like rain. When it's winter, I like rain. When it's summer, I like sun. And today... Stood nothing up pee down all day. Yeah, it's been really miserable, hasn't it? We're actually due snow on Saturday. Right, here in the sunny Midlands. But what I've been noticing, so I wanted to talk about today, one of the topics anyway. Um, so, are you one of those people, yeah, I'm talking to you over there, uh, who, when you buy an item... Mm. So I was walking the dog the other day, and I walked past this house. Oh, Oh, God. You're lucky that didn't stay on your top, are you? No, do you know it hasn't? You've got a tiny dollop of garlic mayo on your tip. That's it. On your top. On the top. Sorry. On the top. Exactly. Uh, <coughs> you're one of them people, anyway. So you buy an item, like it might be an 80 inch TV or whatever. And I noticed this because I was walking along the other day. Somebody bought a huge TV, like a cinema screen television. I put it in a tiny little Toby Stairs. No, I don't know. It wasn't oh, a big house. I saw that the other day. It wasn't a big house. It was more telly than wall. Well, I didn't look in through the window. I'm not a nosy bug. I'm like, oh, let me look at your TV through your window. Now, it was a massive television, but the box, rather than break it up and burn it or stick it in the bin bag, they just stuck it outside in their front garden for the recycling men to take away. And I thought to myself... I hope we're lucky if I've been mended that. They won't do it unless it's inside the bin. But what I think so, what a great way to advertise to any potential burglar. Oh, you've got a new TV, yeah. Brand new 18-inch television in there, Derek. Let's go and bob in there when everyone's asleep. You've got to be off your frigging head. Yeah, that's true. By the way, Mr. Burglar, we do not use a crappy old black and white television. We now have an 18-inch widescreen. Yeah, it's just gone up. Um, the screws are probably pretty loose that's because so true. Barbara couldn't screw in properly. So you pop in whilst we uh, go out to do the shopping later on. You're welcome to it. We was going past... So we went to a firework display. No, I remember the six. And um, so we was in the car. Claire's boyfriend, Lion. He picked us up. It was like an hour and a half in traffic for like something that's around the corner from me. But anyway, we went past his house. And it was like, I, w- I won't say Terry's house, but it was like one of them, like you could tell it was like a small two bed house. Mm-hmm. And then I had the blinds completely open. It was night time. And on the wall, so like you say your chimney breast, the whole thing was the TV. The room was too small for the telly. It was like sitting on the front row of the cinema, if you know what I mean. It was just enormous. I don't understand that. You've got to think ratio, haven't you, a bit? I used to love it when I was a kid, watching other people's TVs. So okay. when my mum was a kid, and maybe your mum, I think I've heard this from yours, definitely my mum, when she was young, so she was born in the 60s, and TVs were everywhere. Like back then, it was like um, crisps these days. Like you can't go to the local shop and find a packet of crisps because there's a, a big shortage. And back in the 60s, not everyone had a television. Mm-hmm. So my mum my used to have to go to the neighbours whose dad had a TV. And she'd go around there and watch it. And like, oh, okay, mum, cool. Mm. That's the way it was, eh? You mean when your mum was a kid, she probably didn't have a TV? No, so. listen, you're going to be surprised, dear. Go on, then. Did she create the TV? No, listen. So, my mum told me, because my mum's family, my, my granddad, he was like a joiner and a, a welder. You like one or he was one? He was, but I don't know if that's the right word for back then. Right. And so, my, my mum's family was put well off on the street. They were the first person in the whole of their street to have a television. Fair point. Yeah. Rich bitch alert. No, no, you're coming from good money, Anne. That's my nan you're talking about. I'm teasing you. I never got to meet Ames now, which is a shame. No, my my, my bad for my nan's died when I was 16. I never met my granddad's. Mm. They died before I was born. That was a real shame. So, but it's funny that, isn't it? Because like, as a kid growing up, I had a nan and a grand. Uh, so, a nan and a partner, who's my step-granddad. 
a gran and a granddad. So to me, it was just like, oh, I'm going around my grands, or I'm going out with my granddad, whatever it might be, yeah. to my mates. And some of my friends, I thought at the time, it was, that's unusual. You don't have a, a mum or you don't have a dad or your mum and dad ain't together. Because when you're a kid, it's like, don't be silly. Your mum and dad have got to be together because mine are. Then mine split when I was 18. But surprisingly, some people, a lot of people's parents ain't together or they've, they've lost relatives or whatever. I think when you're a kid, it's hard to understand the concept of... Like, I used to think, oh, like, I'd love to meet my granddad. I'd, I'd love to kind of have that... Cheeky it. They're asking how our food was on Uber Eats. I'm still bloody eating it, love. Go no, on. but like, you know, it, it, like Lee, I mean, he's 36 now, and he's still got his granddad, haven't you? Yeah, surprisingly. We weren't expecting him to still be around at the minute. No. And uh, I swear his granddad will live out everybody. But like, my, my so my dad's dad died when he was 15. He had a brain hemorrhage. My mum's dad... She was sitting opposite him on the chair and he was reading a book and sucking the polo mint, if you know what that is. And he was sitting there, just went, died instantly of a heart attack. And at the time we had priests next door. You can't do anything. The paramedics came and they said, even if I was standing there with like one of them machines, you know, defibrillator, wouldn't have worked. And it's like he said, it's brilliant for the person who's died just straight away. That's the way I'd love to go. But no, I've never got to meet my granddad. That's a shame. Sorry, I was gassed up then with coke. And I miss my nans, my bow for my nans. Mm. What are you going to do, babe? It's a shame. Um, but going back to the television situation, yeah, I used to love watching people's TVs through the windows. So if I was out with my mates and the football was on, didn't have it. it kids, if you're watching, back then... When manners I, wasn't a thing. <laughs> manners? Yeah. I had manners. You go up to somebody's window and start watching Sally. Well, Alright, so let's put the, the picture out here. TVs back then were a lot smaller. Like, if you had a 30-inch television, oh, yeah. that was huge. I mean, God, people must have better... I reckon people had way better eyesight, you know, because you imagine sitting where we sit, this television that we used to have back then was like a fraction of the size of what we've got now, <laughs> and yet you could still see what Deirdre was eating for a tea on Coronation Street. It's crazy. So... We, Wi-Fi on phones weren't a thing when we were kids. So if I watched another football score, or I wanted to get in touch with mum, I had to ring on a pay phone. When that's... Yeah, and the actual phone boxes. Yeah, not they weren't just used as somewhere for homeless people to have a pee, uh, or drug dealers to do their dealings. Now you actually made phone calls in the phone <laughs> box. Uh, but yeah, I used to look through people's windows to see what the football score was. I'm like, ah, oh, come on, United! Or, oh, shit, they're losing. I'd be disappointed oh, for us. probably just not the door. That'd be rude, eh? Yeah, but what? imagine if someone's just there looking at you, looking in. Yeah, but like I used to deliver the newspapers. So I'd, I'd stick my head in the window, like, oh, mm-hmm. what's going on in there? I'm bargain on. That's good. She's got a deal there, she has. But yeah, that's just the way it was. Changing rooms. Oh, I love changing rooms as a kid. Did any of you remember in school, like, mainly primary school, it was high school as well, I used to wheel in this big-ass television on oh. this trolley thing. It was mm. enormous. This is the problem. Look at this. I'll give you a prime example of a crappy chip. Look at that. And literally all these, to me... Oh, there's just... some good chips there, no, thank you. That's... No, where? Yeah, that's a good chip. That's awful. That is a nice soggy chip. Eat it. This one that's is a good chip. probably an all right chip. Dunk it in my ketchup. No. All right, don't I? I don't like ketchup that much. Yeah, them TVs that Aim was on about in these like big black well, ours was in a big black box on legs. And they'd wheel it in. You only had one TV for the whole school. Maybe two at a push. You never had to worry about them being nicked. Because there ain't no way any The wheels alone had let it out. <laughs> they were too heavy. <coughs> <coughs> I got some of that hot sauce in my mouth. I nearly lost my kebab. Yeah, these TVs are bloody huge. No, it was Sorry. it was enormous. Uh, we had one a few years ago before we got this one here, and it was before flat screens were when, when me and I first got together. And I had to lift it one day. Lee, that was about 40 years ago. Yeah, I had to lift it up. I nearly put my back out. God knows what they loaded up with, because there's bricks in there just to pad it out a bit. Like, in my high school, so we had tellies all dotted around the school. We had a thing called a lecture theatre, and it did a time in there. It's like. 
what would it what would it be called if it isn't called electric theatre? Not like your hall, I guess, but we had these like stairs going up with all chairs and then they'd sit they'd stand at the bottom on the floor with this wooden thing and they'd talk like a bit like an American type school. Well anyway, at lunchtime, if it was raining, you could go in there and eat your lunch and everything and they just bring it I'm not kidding you. I, imagine like these big screens now, but one of them old style television, mm. some of the back that was yeah. empty here. Excuse me, guys, it was massive, and they'd put MTV on for us. It was brilliant. You had a posh school you did, though, didn't you? Like, in the respect of, we just had a hall, and that was it. Our hall was like a Swiss army knife. You could use it for anything. So our hall was the sports hall. Really? It'd be the um, assembly hall, the testing hall. Not COVID testing, like for school test exams and stuff. Um, the... Piss around hall if you got to hang around somewhere when nobody else, when everyone was in class and you wanted to hide out and not go to class, you'd go and hide in the hall behind the big red curtains and just hang around back there doing stuff you shouldn't do. So we had too many halls. No, we had a massive sports hall with like all basketball court in, um, badminton hall. We had um, netball courts, tennis courts, astroturf. And then you'd go round the corner, you'd have your lecture theatre, and behind that we had, and that had con- like concertina doors, like louvre doors, and that back time when we had like performances, we used to have like artists come in and get, they had this huge stage and they'd go on there. Then we had a gym, a gym, we had a gymnast room. We had a gym, it was the caretaker. He was, he was called Jim, our caretaker was. Um, we had a, <coughs> a gymnast room. You had a lot of rooms, didn't you? Um, you needed more kids, so less rooms, that's what you needed. Well, ours was a it. super school. All right, smart. So, no, that was a lot of students in there. We had, like, different blocks and... About two years after I left, no, that's a lie. About five years after I left my school, they shut it down. It was like, Lee's gone. No point keeping it open anymore. Let me tell you about that school world. There was a video on YouTube. Yeah. Remember when you was like, that's just my school. Oh, yeah. I was quite proud of it. I even said, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's a program about, like, naughty kids or something. Sort of or other. Um, but, no, I thought I should have a plaque on our school. But, no, didn't do anything like that for me. Two generations of my family went to that school. Or three. No, two. Not three. Three. My grandma, my mum and me all went there. And now it's gone. Still there, the school is just shut down. <clears throat> you... I I love my school like it was quite we was lucky there because we had all music studios we so we had our music department and then we had a studio as well. Do um, you show off? You got a studio as oh, well. I'm not sure. It's not my personal property, is it? Lee? It's just a school I went to. We have a buddy studio. Um, where you could proper go in and record things. It was like a proper studio. It was brilliant. We had Bunsen burners. On. I used to set fire to my schoolwork. And put it in the sink in science class. And windows are open really wide, so when the teacher went out of the class, I'd climb out the window. The teacher would come in, Where's Lee gone? And I'd be stood outside the window, just like listening in what was going on. And he'd go out the room looking for me. I'd climb back through the window, sit in my seat, he'd come back in, like, All right, Mr. Rouse, how are you doing? Where you been, Lee? Been here the whole time. I think you need an eye test. Yeah. I, I don't understand it, though. From the ages of 11 and 16, at what point did you think about growing up a bit? I'm still trying to figure that part out. I'm like, still trying to do it. A lot of your stories are always naughty stories. Dude, how naughty really is it just jumping out of a classroom window and Shall jumping I tell you something now? You wouldn't have done that in Moscow. Why? We had a teacher called Mr Coombs. Yeah. <gasps> Mate, he was like ex-army. Mm-hmm. He'd, I don't know, my teachers were like... They just seemed to be more intimidating. You just wouldn't want... There was a... Well, it's a school, like, it was a very disciplined school because we used to have a lot of treats. Well, like, your, your, your school, like, from what you've told me, was very, it was a bad school. Well, no, it was a bad school, Lee. They was, offered us treats. No, I don't mean, tr- but it was rated a bad school on the telly, wasn't it, on that YouTube thing? They took us one day as a treat to go and do grave rubbing, and that cannot be mistaken for grave robbing. High school or primary? I don't remember. It must have been high school because we lived near, a, we went to school near a graveyard. <laughs> Um, but we never went grave robbing, but you like, you'd go, you'd get a, pen and pa- a pencil and paper, and you'd put it on a gravestone, and you'd rub it. It's quite disrespectful when you think about it. Like, they're the parents, not the parents, like people who've lost people, visiting, putting flowers down, and there's 40 school kids running right over the bloody gravestones. Shouldn't have happened. That's bad teaching. 
But apart from that, I went to a very respectful, decent school. P probably. <laughs> Some days I went, anyway. I never actually had a full day off skiving. Apart from when I, was, I pretend to be sick once or twice. We don't even like skiving for one or two. Skiving means where you don't go to school. Truanting, bunking, skiving. Obsconding. Obsconding? Well, not that, no, I wasn't that posh to call it that. Uh, and you'd like, I don't want to go to English today because we used to have double English some some weeks. So, all right, we'll go to one English class, but then the last one, we'll pretend we have to go home or do something for somebody else, another teacher, and just do whatever we want to do, basically. You won't get away with it with one school. How's your food? I've just got to go in a sec. Has it been good? The chips are awful. Not going to lie to you. We say it every time. I don't like chips. I like this. This is just amazing. Seriously. Maybe next time we should order the kebabs and make our own chips. I don't really even bother about chips. I just like the kebab. It's brilliant. Are you enjoying the kebab, mate? It's too much. Like, I'm at the point of me and there's a sausage here. I'm not even touched it. But this... It's got to be one of the best kebab meats I've ever had. Mm. I love it. That is saying something like yeah, that. because I, I'm fussy with it. Uh, and it's really decent, I'll be honest. And the salad, I used to get put off, I told you, but that's brilliant. It's really nice. I'm really happy with that. Um, we're right for a minute. I've come, I used to have an issue with the royal family. And now I don't, because I, I feel rather sorry How for the Queen. Is this? No, I did, because I think about it the other day. I more often think about things we should talk about. The ro I feel sorry for the Queen, because not only she got a bad back, I'm sure this week she had a bad back, and she had to miss, like, Sandringham or the horse race in the summer. Does that, no, no, not charity event, and the memorial service, of course. Oh, she missed that, yeah, because uh, she I had really a bad back. I really feel like there's something else going on with the Queen. Yeah, I reckon she's knackered, I mean, the woman's, like, 170. She just she's needs a rest down the poor sod. Give her a chance, have a Could they not, like, give her a few years off? I mean, being in all sincerity here, she's she not earned a break. Just let her go, sit in the back room, have a pack of chocolate digestives, put her feet up and watch EastEnders, whatever she watches. No, I reckon it's... I, I don't want to worry anybody, because I know some people really love the royal family, but just the way they went about it with Prince Philip, I just think, you know, it's just something they're not saying, because it seems to be a lot of health reports that no-one's confirming. And I reckon it's down to the the issue I was about to talk about. Why has that just appeared? I'm going to be... Me. Sorry, there's a wire on the screen there. Uh, yeah, so I'm thinking, I feel sorry for the Queen, and I only figured this out because we have ketchup, ours is little ketchup. Okay. But if you buy brune sauce or an other... HP sauce. HP sauce and other uh, variety of sauces yeah. and other items that are made in the UK, some of them are protected or represented by the Queen's badge or whatever the hell it's called. It's like property of the Queen or something like that, don't they? What is it now? Her Majesty's Parliament. Not Parliament. Uh, yeah, HP. Her. No, it's not just it. HP. There's, there's, there's on a lot of brands. I oh, always white trousers as well. Who's got the Prince white Charles trip. food? No, That's no. That's your fault, isn't it? Uh, we're, we're way off topic on what I'm on about here. Basically, the Queen protects some things and not other things. And yeah, I forget she protects we... seagulls and swans. Oh, bloody hell. I'm... It's certain food products, but I can't remember what they are now. A brown sauce is one of them, and it comes with the, the Queen's royal seal of approval. But imagine if she's walking down the street in Scarborough one day, and I was thinking this the other day, That's fine. and Big Barry has had a bacon sandwich in the morning. His missus made him a bacon sandwich. He's sitting there eating it. He's got his brown sauce, and they don't like brown sauce. His missus does it to pee him off. And then he has this bacon sandwich with the brown sauce. It's like, for God's sake, love, I tell you every day, don't put brown sauce on there. Next day, Queen's walking down the street in Scarborough feeding the seagulls. Barry, Big Barry's walking down the street having a bad day because they had an argument with the missus over a cup of tea. He sees the Queen and he lobs a bacon sandwich at her. So that's your fault, Queen. You represent the brown sauce brigade. It's called the Royal Warrant. That's it. And but it's on different items. Sorry, so HP stands for Her Majesty's Parliament. Does it? Yeah. What about all these other companies that use that badge of honour then? Because it's more than just HP. Um, it appears on the rest of By appointment of HM the Queen, by appointment of HRH Duke of Edinburgh, and by appointment of HRH the Royal Prince of Wales. So Whatever, but, anyway. But HP is Her Majesty's Sauce. What I can imagine, people get a bit annoyed at the Queen and have a go at her for, say they're having a bad sauce 
bad day and a bad experience with brown sauce, I reckon she gets it in the neck. I reckon she gets loads of hate mail with bottles of brown I sauce love stuffed brown in sauce. there. I actually think that's one of the nicest brown sauces that you can get. And also, I'll tell one. you what I love. Absolutely nothing to do with the Queen. You don't love anything at all about the Queen. That goes down No, I said I... nothing to do with the Queen and all that business. But I love how Americans pronounce Worcestershire sauce. They go Worcestershire That's sauce. That's what I like no, but, uh, Like, from round, cause that's only down the road from us. So, it's actually Worcestershire sauce. Or some people say Worcester sauce, because there's Worcestershire, Worcestershire. It's actually Shire, what we say here. We don't say Worcestershire. We say Worcestershire. That's how you pronounce it, Worcestershire sauce. Some people say Worcester sauce, because there's another place. <laughs> there was this guy in um, in America the other day, he was like, Worcester? Worcester sauce? And I was like, oh my God, that's just down the road from us. And a lot of people don't know that Cadbury, the chocolate brand, mm. is actually based and made in Birmingham, which is 20 minutes down oh, the road. Oh no, hit your top. Yeah. Oh, that's funny, Orange Pop. Let's right, guys, we've got to go because we're about to run out of space on the phone. So I'm going to go and see you later. Alligator. That was amazing, say goodbye. Kebab. I'm not going to do all the usuals. So, Today, just a goodbye. Laters.